We are going to the video chat. We've got Kelly Rudy with us, a man who needs absolutely no introduction. Good morning, Rudes. Welcome to the Rod Peterson Show. It's uh, it's your debut on the program. How are you? Yes, thank you. What's this, 125 episodes? Yes. 26? Uh, this is 125 today. Nice. Congrats. Thank you, Kelly. It's a lot of fun. And we do recognize sports figures who've worn the number corresponding to the show number. So today we're recognizing number 25s, and that includes Jeff Fries and Mike Keene, Darnell Nurse. So trust me, I got you in mind for 132. It's coming up in uh, in a couple weeks' time. So <laughs> one of my favorite numbers, of course, Kelly Rudy. Kel, the NHL's a lot of fun. Hockey's a lot of fun. But this week has not been a lot of fun, I bet. Can you take us through your take as a guy on that Flames broadcast? So Monday night, the Flames played in uh, Pittsburgh. Uh, they lost in overtime. It was uh, maybe one of the best games that the Flames had played in, uh, if not the season, in a long, long time. So uh, Rick Ball and I were leaving the broadcast booth, and he said, did you get the email? And uh, I hadn't looked yet, and he filled me in about uh, the circumstances and what was going on. And uh, Akeem Alou and the uh, alleged incident um, from when he played in the minors and immediately when Rick told me the uh, uh, the nature of it uh, I was uh, pretty darn worried I thought uh, this is very very serious um, this is not going to go away in in a few hours and uh, this is going to be something that is going to be a uh, a situation that's going to last for a long, long time. And I heard you just say that Darren Drager said that uh, there's no update today. So all I can tell you is I thought the Flames handled it as well as uh, you could possibly uh, handle a situation like this. As Brad Tree Living said many, many times, they're trying to be transparent. And as you know, uh, there are further allegations uh, from uh, Michael Jordan, the uh, player for the Carolina Hurricanes, that alleges also that there is uh, physical abuse. So this is a situation that uh, we wish uh, was not uh, around the game of hockey. But I'll tell you this, uh, Rod, um, I think moving forward, this might give some people a voice that uh, out there feel that they're being threatened, uh, people are treating them aggressively, uh, being uh, dis dismissive towards them, humiliating them, whatever the case may be. Uh, I hope that they're not only uh, professional and amateurs out there um, in our sport, other sports, maybe in a band class somewhere, uh, in a dance class, feeling the same sort of way. And we have to make sure that uh, uh, we get rid of people that are um, making people feel that way. This, this is a, it's a society with social media. I'm not trying to be too uh, deep here, but it's a society with social media, boy, that it, it's getting mean. And I thought social media was meant to uh, spread positivity and love, and it's not happening. Kelly, that's such a great point. <clears throat> you know, not to compare the two, but, you know, we, we talked about the Marner-Babcock situation, but Mike Babcock owned it and said, I did that, and it was a terrible, stupid thing of me to do. I wish I could take it back. I can't. This is different, though, in the flame situation, Kelly, because on one hand, you've got a player that's, essentially saying that Bill Peters has treated him specifically in a very poor way for a long time, many times. But the apology that Bill Peters had almost implied that it was an isolated incident that he used language he shouldn't have, but it was sort of he kind of threw it out there and it, it should have offended everybody. It wasn't directed at one person. So somebody's not telling the truth because they're not really the same story. Am I the only one that finds that a bit odd that at this point Bill Peters is essentially saying that didn't happen? I, it, was a, it was a generic comment that wasn't intended for one person? Well, the apology, I think, speaks for itself. I think that uh, uh, the people that represent Bill or the people that he's hired uh, came up with the apology. And, and uh, this, uh, it seems to me, I'm not a lawyer. Uh, I don't know much about uh, law when it, it comes with this sort of stuff. So it seems to me like this is going to, going to be a long, ongoing uh, situ situation. And so the apology was, uh, uh, I'm sure it was sincere because I know Bill, but I also think that it was uh, in a way to protect himself uh, because uh, what, you know, what's going to happen down the road. So, um, yeah, 
you know, I don't have much to say about the apology because it's kind of what we all expected. He's got a team behind him, and I guess uh, he has that right, and he should. <laughs> to Hockey Kelly, um, I wonder, you being the former goalie that you are, how much you examine the play of David Riddick and Cam Talbot and do you ever wonder why they play who and when and for how long and what stretches? I mean, how do you, what's your analysis of the Flames goaltending situation in the crease? Well, David Riddick has far exceeded anybody's expectations. He has been unbelievable. Like, I don't know if you had a chance uh, last night to watch the game uh, here in Buffalo. Some of but it, But yeah. he was a rock star. Period, yeah. He had 15 shots against in the third and that always isn't an indication how tough the period was. You know, you can have 15 shots and only three of them dangerous. But I thought Buffalo had somewhere around 10 or 11 high-quality scoring chances in the third period. So David was incredible. Uh, I think the Flames would like to have Cam Talbot in there more. Um, his body work isn't large, so it's a little bit hard to critique his uh, play. <coughs> Excuse me. Although it's been good, uh, I think the Flames definitely – feel like they have to get Talbot in there. In fact, I, I do know that their intent on this road trip was to play Talbot last night, but Riddick was just been playing so well. And, you know, their schedule lightens up. So they go home, they have a game on Saturday, and then they don't play again until next Thursday at home versus Buffalo. So I don't know if that means that Riddick's going to get a, a little bit of rest and work on his game a little bit with the goalie coach Jordan Siglet, and they might throw Cam Talbot in there. And or because the rest is, does that mean that David Riddick is going to play more? Uh, I do find it odd, guys. And I don't know why this started this year, and maybe crept into the league a little bit last year. I have no idea why coaches feel that a goalie can't play back to back. Thank you. Happening, right? Yeah, the Thank forwards you. do it. The defensemen do it. <laughs> well, and all of us goalies did it forever. I know it's a different game, but... You know, there are other times where you can rest a starter. It doesn't have to be just on the back end of a back-to-back. -back. You, you know, if you are if you manage the guy's minutes properly in his practice time, he can play back-to-back. -back and, and if you work with the goalie coach and the goalie himself, you can find other days in a schedule that he can have the night off, and it just doesn't have to be on the back end. Well, it, that's the thing is the, the, those Flames coaches know that you were a legitimate superstar as a player. Do you just sit there and just, just stay out of it? Or do you ever offer your insight? Do they invite you into these discussions? Because I feel the same way. That That's interesting. Uh, <laughs> I was told, because I worked on Hockey Night in Canada exclusively until, what, six seasons ago when Rogers Sports said, got the uh, the NHL deal. And then I added the Flames uh, color analyst. Uh, and and I had a conversation with a number of guys that do the same job I do now, the color analysts. And I said, what do I do if they ask me my opinion? Or what do I do if they ask me into a meeting or sit beside them on a plane? And everybody had a different answer. So I basically, basically taken the approach that I don't offer an opinion. And uh, if I'm asked, I rarely ever give an opinion. I'm not a paid coach, so I stay out of it. I do have my opinion on the broadcast and especially on Saturday nights where I feel that uh, my voice, uh, it's, it's different than being uh, a Flames analyst where, you know, you're, you're on a team plane and stuff. So I think Saturday night is uh, my opportunity to share my thoughts. Good. Well, we enjoy it, man. Keep it up, Kelly. Appreciate the time. Huge fan here, as you know. And uh, please say hi to Donna when you get a chance. Big Ryder fan. Love you guys. Thanks for the time. <laughs> okay. Love you guys, too. Thanks for having me on. <laughs> You're watching Rod Peterson On Demand. For more of The Rod Peterson Show, visit rodpeterson.com or follow Rod Peterson on social media.